So to understand how to utilize the interface contracts part, portion of the contracts library, let's take a look at a very simple example. I have an interface here that's called Payroll Calculator. Payroll Calculator takes two methods. It's calculate paycheck based on a base rate and hours worked, and a determined base rate based on an employee and return back the base rate for that employee. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and create two implementations that uh, classes that implement this interface. We'll call this hourly payroll calculator. Make it public. Go ahead and implement all the methods. Payroll calculate paycheck simply going to take the base rate, multiply by hours work, and return that. And determine base rate is going to do a little bit of a math. So we're going to do a switch statement. So I now have my class called the Hourly Payroll Calculator and it implements both my methods. Let's go ahead and copy this. We'll create this as a Salary Payroll Calculator. And we're just going to increment these values to, you know, salary employees make a little bit more. Now I have these two classes. Now if I'm going to utilize the Code Contracts Library, I'm probably going to want to write some contracts on this. So what I want to do is do things like this. base rate is greater than zero we require that hours worked is greater than or, or greater than zero and hey for a salary employee we're going to say you're not supposed to work more than 60 hours And then for base rate, we're actually going to utilize a insurers. And we're basically going to say that it's got to be greater than zero. Now, because I have this on my salary, I probably want to provide this to my hourly employee as well. We're going to change hourly employee to be 50 hours. And we're going to utilize the exact same insurers. Now hopefully you've already seen a problem here. I have two classes that do very similar things and I'm applying the same contracts to both of those with one minor exception that's the the maximum number of hours worked. Well this is redundant code and it's just error prone and I don't really care for redundant code. So this is where the interface contracts portion of the library comes in and actually can save us time and energy. What I can do with the contracts library is I can create a sealed method that inherits off a of payroll calculator and provide my contracts inside of that. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to go ahead and implement these as well. But we're going to do something a little bit different here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these two contracts from my hourly class. I'm also going to go ahead and add in an insurers. Just so that we always ensure we return something greater than zero. 
and that's done. I don't want to implement any body to this, but you'll see that I'll get a little squiggly here telling me that I'm missing my return statement. Because this is a contract interface implementation, I don't actually care about the return type. So I'm just going to go ahead and return the default of double. Don't really care. Seems odd that I'm having to do this, but you'll understand that this this line of code right here will never actually get caught or called by the runtime because the IL rewriter is going to do some magic for us. And let's go ahead and remove this line out of here. Do return default. And I've been able to move my some of my contracts out of my hourly calculator. Let's go ahead and remove the same thing out of my salaried calculator and that's it. Now am I done? No I'm not. I need to do a couple other things. First I want to make an explicit implementation of this. The reason is it's going to make the contracts library a little bit happier and actually allow me to utilize this. If I don't do this it doesn't quite work in all scenarios. So now how do I tell my the contract library that this is the implementation of the interface contract for this particular interface. To do this, what I need to do is apply a couple attributes to these two line, uh, interfaces. One, I want to, on my interface, I want to say this is a contract class and it's of type I payroll calculator contract. This essentially is creating my link from my interface to my sealed class down here. Now, on my class, I want to call contract class 4 and provide my interface on payroll calculator. So I've now created a bi-directional link to say that this is the interface for my contract, this is my contract implementation for my interface, and the world's a happy place. So now that we've written this code to create my interface, to create the implementation of my contract where I can provide my requires and my insured, as well as my two base classes. Let's go ahead and run this and see if I get some violations. And we'll say that this person worked 55 hours. We'll make this an overachiever. And there you go. So I've implemented both of my calculators. And I'm going to go ahead and put a breakpoint right here. And what I'm actually going to expect is that when I step into this Calculate Paycheck, it's going to come into here, go into my hourly, come into Calculate Paycheck, but because I have a interface contract applied to it, I would actually then expect to step into my Calculate Paycheck to actually run my requires and then my insured. So let's go ahead and run the application. So I've hit my first breakpoint. Maybe we'll step over. Now let's go ahead and step into my Calculate Paycheck. And you'll see that I'm stepping into it. And my precondition failed immediately because I'm over my 50 hours. Okay, well that's easy enough. But I haven't actually stepped into my, my base class. So let's go ahead and change that. So I'm working 45 hours. And that my base rate, I'm just going to hard code this to be negative 4. Why negative four? Because I know that will violate my contract. So let's run this again. So I've hit my breakpoint. I've passed my first requires here, which is must be less than 50 hours. I've now stepped into my contract implementation. And you'll see that I'm immediately on the requires. So base rate's greater than four. And you'll see my precondition failed. Base rate is not greater than four. And I've failed. So there you have it. 
very simple, very clean implementation of interface contracts for the Code Contracts Library. To recap, what did we do? Well, first what we did is we, we declared our interface. We created a couple methods. We then created a couple classes that implemented that interface. And we originally created classes that had redundant contracts in multiple classes that did the same thing. So we extracted those into a new sealed class that is our con interface contract implementation class. We created that class, had it in inherit off my interface again, moved our requires, I ensured we could do assumes and asserts up here as well. We returned some default value, we don't really care what the real value is. And then we wired it all together with the magic goo. The magic goo here is our these attributes, contract class 4 and contract class. That's how we link our interface to the implementation contract. And then we just simply ran our code and because this is the contract implementation for this interface and our classes both inherit off that interface, the world's a happy place and all works. So I hope you learned something and until next time. Mm -hmm.